I would like to talk to you about how the atheists are doing a little better today. One of the lies that we've had to create in order to accommodate Islam is that all religions are the same. But I read an article by an atheist, his name is Robert Tresinski, who did one of the better jobs that I've seen in very brief fashion to compare the fact that is Islam the same as Christianity? And he comes to the conclusion that they're definitely not. What I find ironic is that it is an atheist who is arguing that Christianity is a better religion than Islam. Now the New York Times says Islam is no more inherently violent than other religions. Really? Well, let's check the violence. All you have to do is to read Yahoo News in the morning and there will be some other violent event that has come out of Islam. But if you want to find violence with Christianity, you've got to go back to, say, the Spanish Inquisition, centuries ago, or maybe the Crusades, centuries ago. So those are hardly equal today. History violence is not the same as violence every day when you wake up in the morning. Then we have the life of Christ versus the life of Muhammad. Jesus was destroyed by violence and never preached violence. He preached peace. Whereas Muhammad rose to power on the back of violence. It was violence that made Muhammad successful and the religion of Islam successful. So there's no comparison there. Then you have a principle that Jesus brought into the moral issue, which later turned out to have overwhelming political impact. And that was the idea, what you do to the least of these, you do to me. That is, the smallest person is to be treated well. The smallest person is to be part of a community and not pushed down and abused simply because he is weak and small. This idea of the weak being treated well over the centuries led to the liberal democracy that we have today, whereas Muhammad merely subjugated all. We have the early history of Christianity versus the early history of Islam. In the early history of Christianity, it was persecuted, whereas in the early history of Islam, it was the persecutor. Islam rose to power by military conquest. Then we have the idea of the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of man. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and unto God that which is God. Well, that pretty much separates the two. But under Islam, we have the kingdom of God, and it is a kingdom of the Sharia, and all those who enter therein shall suffer, Muslim and Kafir alike. You have the different roles of philosophy in the two religions. Islam at first was intrigued by Greek thought, and then later completely and absolutely not only rejected Greek thought, but all philosophy. Whereas Christianity, although it was shy about Greek thought at first, embraced it and made it an integral part of Christian doctrine. So they're not comparable there at all. Then you have secular law, which is what Christianity preaches, versus religious Sharia law, the ultimate religious law. Well, let me tell you something. I've lived under a constitution which was founded on Christian principles, and I have only read about Sharia, and I do not want to live under the Sharia, and don't tell me that they're all the same. We have the history of religion in America. The separation of church and state was brought about by Christian ministers in the foundation of this nation. They insisted that we would create a nation which did not favor one religion over the other. Whereas Islam is all about favoring one religion over the other, the religion of Islam, it is to dominate all. So the atheist here, Mr. what's his name, uh, Robert Tresinski, is completely right in comparing these points and he demolishes the idea that all religions are the same. A small tragedy here is that why aren't Christians writing these kind of articles? Why are Christians so silent about the evil of Islam? Why are Christians so silent about the persecution of Christians? Why is it that an atheist has to come up to defend Christianity? Christianity needs to do better than this. Thank you. Mm -hmm.